What's going on everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Nathan and on this planet we send it and we're going to be getting into today, well, to be honest, it's a long overdue. I started a balcony project uh, nine months ago and let me show you how much of a difference nine months makes. And also while I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and show you what happened to my balcony. Basically, I started getting water intrusion into my entrance door and also into my garage. Fortunately, it wasn't coming into the house. Now, the um, so what I did then is I basically identified the crack. I put in some thick set because I had a concrete balcony. So I put in some thick set concrete and then I smoothed everything out with some thin set. And it's been there for nine months later to include all kinds of reasons and excuses and just flat out laziness and why I didn't get to it and to and also include forgetting about it um, so finally we are getting back at it today so all right we are going to be what I'm going to be walking through you on this project and on this video is we're going to be showing you where things are right now and then or when I started it's I actually I completed the project already and then what, what I'm going to be showing you is uh, the geotextile that I used to kind of smooth things up and then put down the liquid rubber and then we'll go ahead and talk about some lessons learned all right I got a plan in place let's go ahead and send it all right, this is where things left off. This is where we're currently at. I just ended up sweeping up the bird poop uh, and they, that was all dried so it came up real easy. So what, what I'm about to do is put some tape along the edges where I don't want the product to go. And then I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get ready to prime it. So what you're about to see me do is uh, lay down the tape and then put the first coat of primer down. All right, let's send it. Before we move on to the next step, I want to show you, it appears that it's wet, at least it looks that way, but I am I can confirm it is dry to the touch. So we're going to move on and go to the next step. So what we're going to be doing is applying the uh, geotextile, and I'm going to put a picture up here for you guys to see it. Um, but what that is going to help me do is smooth out some of these edges and these seams as uh, certain walls in the balcony comes together in addition to that to smoothing that out what I'm really hoping to smooth out are these lips here to where when I was moving the original air um, I wasn't able to get some of that what I originally desired because of the tools I just didn't have it or something small enough to get down there and I didn't want to take up the awning so I'm going to be putting down the geotextile to hopefully reduce that lip when it's all said and done and I put down the first layer of the liquid rubber.
DIY lesson number one, make sure you have one brush for not only every coat of the primer, but also if you plan to use the primer to lay down the textile, make sure you have another brush. I thought I was gonna be able to use one brush for both, but I was wrong. So, um, and I was already planning to use one brush for every coat of the liquid rubber, but you're gonna need one brush for every coat of the primer too. And the last thing I want to show you guys is before I go and get the brush, this is how much out of my gallon container I've used. I've used approximately maybe 65%. And so this was able to cover, I'm going to go ahead and put the number in because I don't know how much square footage my balcony is, but I'll go ahead and put that in here in the editing. And uh, so that's how much this was able to cover. And as you saw, I went very heavy on the first coat. You could do two coats if you wanted to, but I think I'm going to be pretty good with just the one coat. I'll go ahead and explain here because this in this one area has basically what I'm going to have to do around the whole thing. All right, so first thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using the brush and I'm going to be going real heavy all the way up uh, to the painter's tape. And then I'm going to etch in a little bit to where the roller I know can't go. And I'm going to go real heavy as I can with that. I'm going to do that around the edge too because if you recall on the other side is where the painter's tape is. You need to remove the painter's tape before it completely dries. So I'm going to go real heavy around the whole edge as much as I can all the way around. And then once I get that coat done, I'm going to go ahead and come on out and remove all the painter's tape. Once I have the painter's tape all removed from everywhere, then I'm going to go ahead and lay down a re the first real heavy coat with the roller. And it looks like the product needs three to four um, heavy coats. So I'm going to do one now. I'm going to do one before the end of the before the end of the day. I, it, it, you need to put the extra coat down in between six to eight hours. So once I get done, I'll make sure that I'm putting the next coat within six to eight hours. And then I'll try to do it again uh, tomorrow morning. And then if necessary, I'll go ahead and do it again tomorrow afternoon. And then from from that point it's 24 to 48 hours to be fully cured but you can't put furniture on it for about seven days but i'm not bringing furniture out here so all right without further ado i'm just waiting for this to dry next thing you'll see me do is go ahead and etch it in with the brush all right let's send it the next day and let's take a look at how it is uh, the birds have already been pooping on it i don't know how well you can see over here here and over here so i'm gonna have to clean that up getting at it um, this area right here was a little thin i will say here basically I, I worked on that end and i worked on the end behind me and then when you basically to your exit as you're working it uh towards where you're going to go this ended up being a little bit thinner because since the slope goes down this way, it was it was easier to manipulate all the other areas because I can use the slope, but now the slope was working against me, so I'll have to put a little extra here when I lay it down, um, and then also where the cracks were originally. But let me show you a few of the spots that were a little thinner than I would like. I'm going to have to go over with the brush. Here on this corner is one of the areas, and this is an area where it was a little thin. I guess on both, this corner is also thin, so that makes both corners a little bit harder to get to, so I'll have to give them a little extra tension. And then along this wall, you got one right there. It's a little thin, so I'm going to have to etch that in a little bit. And then it's a little thin right there. And uh, yeah, so I'll probably do another, I'll probably go ahead and put the tape back up and do this over again with the brush um, before I do the painting. All right, I was hoping to use get three full coats out of this five gallon bucket, but I am actually just over two and a half gallons used. So I'm going to go ahead and try to use the two and a half gallons that are left for the second coat. And I have an extra five gallons to go. Um, so depending on how I'm feeling and what it's looking like, etc., cetera, um, I may just go ahead and dip into that extra bucket and just lay it down extra heavy like the direction says. All right, let's go ahead and send the second coat.
All right, I have used almost all five gallons of my product, and I have just under 185 square feet of space up here. And so with five gallons for, to cover 40 feet per gallon, I've got enough. But if I want to go a little extra thick and go to the 30 foot per um, gallon, then I need to go ahead and add a little bit more. And since I do have some more, I'm going to go put one more heavy coat where I'm going to focus on going left to right, as you see here, just because that's the way the water will be flowing, which is that way. So I want to kind of basically do the brush marks, which are inevitable when using this liquid rubber. Um, I just want to make sure that there is the least amount of resistance funneling everything right off the balcony. All right, let's go ahead and send it. It is the next day and I am, let's take a look at what it looks like up close. So one of the things I want to highlight is it since it is a liquid rubber, it is real, it's not that thin, it's real thick and it's difficult to get some areas smooth. So you can see all the ridges there in the corner. And then if you look at the floor itself, you can see just the brush marks. And I was using a smooth roller too, but it still was coming up with some texture. Now for safety reasons, to be honest, it's probably better to do that. So I'm really not complaining, but all I'm mentioning is don't expect to be able to get it completely smooth as if it was being painted on. Uh, unless there's just a way that uh, you can do it and me not knowing it. Let's also come over here and take a look at uh, this the two areas here. Yeah, so yep, just... Also be mindful that when you're doing it, make sure uh, you go ahead and uh, try to identify the mounds of material before they form. Again, it was just at an angle that was very difficult for me to see those two, but all good. Although, now I will say one concern of mine is, if you look into the sky, those are rain clouds. I'm not sure how much rain we're going to get or if we're going to get any at all. There wasn't any in the forecast yesterday, but of course it came in. And I say that with a concern because... You're supposed to let this basically dry out for at least 24 to 48 hours. And I think I just felt my first drop. Not quite at 24 hours. Yep, there's the second drop. So it's actually starting to come in right now. Was not anticipating that. Um, but uh, you're supposed to let it dry for 24 to 48 hours. I'm hoping with the dry, hum uh, the, the dry weather we've been having due to the Santa Ana winds and it being in the 80s plus to include right now up into the 90s that this thing is well dry. So unfortunately, I'm going to let you know on how things, uh, pan out um, in one way or another by the end of this video. So I was hoping to have this video out tomorrow, um, but what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna wait for the uh, rain to take place, see if there's any casualties, and then I'll report back to you before the end of this video. All right, I'll see you then. Good afternoon. It is actually Friday, the day I originally intended to have this video out. And you just finished watching how I observed the water coming down from here and going right over here to where the original crack was. So I think one thing that I'm going to do to improve the longevity, longevity of this balcony is I'm going to adjust that board to maybe be at more of a slant so that when the water does uh, capture and drain off the uh, upper part of this roof onto this lower roof, then it'll go ahead and more funnel off the side and into my gutter over here instead of onto the balcony. We are up here to show you two DIY lessons learned. The first one being when you're using the textile along something, you want to make sure that uh, you put it in a place to where the liquid rubber can easily get to the backside. 
when everything dries out here, I'm going to go ahead and um, fill that in. But just a lesson learned, be observant of that because I've had that actually in a few places to where I'm going to have to go back and fill that in. That was DIY lesson number two. This is DIY lesson number three. The textile it works really well for mending things in, as you can see here. But also, as you can see here, you can still see the lump that I left behind. Now, it's probably just because I'm looking at it. To be honest, it's pretty much out of sight because it's under the guard railing. Um, but still, just for your knowledge, it will not erase things. However, when you get into cracks like this over here, where the balcony meets the wall, it does a very good job on blending that in, especially since you're already going to have texture anyways. And the texture from the liquid rubber itself will help blend things in too. All right, that's going to go ahead and wrap up this video. And I'll have to be honest, you know, I wasn't originally anticipating going out and trying to get some rain clips for you guys, but I was glad I did because I think that helped me find potentially the root cause on why my balcony might have been failing in the first place. Um, so I think if I do reroute that board a little bit and help reroute the water so that it doesn't land on the balcony, it will improve the longevity of the balcony and the repairs that we did. To include, I also think the liquid rubber will increase the balcony uh, longevity. Now, um, if there's an issue, I will be back to you guys and I'll do a quick video and let you know what's going on. But as of right now, I will say though, in addition, it does appear that everything dried. Um, so we, since we did get the two rains, the things uh, when I laid it, the liquid rubber down the first time, everything dried through because I'm not seeing any issues. But regardless, in one year, I will come back and do a one year review and let you guys know how things are doing either well or maybe not so well. But anyways, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you on the next one.